Good morning. Uh, this is a public deliberation being held by the Baltimore County Board of Appeals. Today is October 17th, 2024. It is now 9.32 a.m. My name is Sharon Bernardi, and I am joined by my fellow board members, Mr. Fred Lauer, as well as Mr. Michael Stelmack. And this matter so regarding Michael Norbert Porter and Sandra Porter, property located 1999 Rocky Point Road, case number 24-060-SPHA. And it's being held um, after a hearing that was concluded on September 11th, 2024. And again, this is a public deliberation. And there are two issues at hand. One is whether or not the board has the authority within BCZR section 500-7 to make an interpretation of council bill, specifically bill number 128-2005 on the minimum lot size requirement. And, um, so if a petition for special hearing should be granted um, pursuant to BCZR section 1A04.3.B.1.a. And the second is whether or not a petition for variance relief from BCZR section 1A04.3.B.1.a to allow a one acre lot in lieu of a 1.5 acre lot in the event it is determined that the 1.5 acre mineral lot size requirement applies. And um, just for the record, there was an opinion and order of, of the administrative law judge wherein the special petition for special hearing was denied and the variance relief was also denied. And that opinion and order are dated May 17th, 2024. And there are many issues um, that are at hand um, in regard to to the larger issues. And the the first I would like for us to deliberate is the the question of whether or not the board has the authority within 500.7 to make an interpretation of a county council bill. And wanted to get my Board members, um, brief statements on on that. I don't know if anyone wanted to make comment on that. Well, the, my understanding, at least at least the way it's laid out within the memorandum and the administrative law judge's opinion is that it's a question of whether this exemption for the back river neck district is read into the zoning law or zoning regulations or whether it's not read into the zoning regulations because even though the bill says that it doesn't apply to the back river neck district that i guess it never made its way into the actual zoning law itself or the book. Um, I, I could be, I, maybe I'm wrong, but that was my understanding. So I, I think that, you know, to the extent that this is an appeal of an ALJ decision, obviously it's de novo, um, essentially from a denial of a, of a, a request. I, I think we do have the authority to, you know, decide what is or what is not in a law because that affects the act the outcome of the request. And I I'm, think that we should oh go ahead, Mr. Lauer. Yeah, I'm sorry. Um I'm in agreement also that we do have the authority to interpret the law. I mean it seems clear to me that that five hundred point seven does basically we we have the power there to look at the law and say, yes, this applies in this case. It's what we do all the time. Uh, 
And so I, 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 I think that if, if the first question is, do we have the authority? I think the answer is yes. Um, the second question, I think, is is probably as you've raised, is does is does is this applicable to this situation, and does that um, being in the legislation itself, but not in the code per se, which is what Mr. Stelmack brought up, uh, how do, how do we how does that balance out in the how do we apply that or whatever? I think that's step number two, if you will. Uh, but step number one is, yes, I think we have the authority in answering your question, Madam Chair. Thank you. And I, I and I, I believe that we do and that we at least in the decision have to just go on record with that. And as the um, ALJ did in, uh, below, um, just then go into alternatively, if someone was to find that we didn't, that we still um, deliberate these sub questions. And so I would love for us to um, now have a conversation around um, what was just raised by both of you regarding the, the footnote and whether or not um, the Back River Neck District um, has the same requirements as others in the RC5 zone. Well, as someone that drafted bills and worked for Baltimore City Council for 15 years, uh, we never looked at legislation as in language and legislation as just thrown in there for the heck of it, if you will. You know, there was always a reason or something behind what was in there. And for us to say that, um, you know, that the back river neck district, that this really is, uh, is is just excessive language or since it didn't get put in the code as was referenced, that uh, it doesn't mean anything, I think is, is, is ridiculous. Um, I do think that it was put in there. They knew what they were doing. It was in two different, two different uh, times, I believe. If, if I'm recalling correctly, and I would say that uh, this language that was clearly the intent of the county council to uh, to have this 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 language not apply, if you will, to the Back River Neck District. I mean that that seems pretty clear to me from the from from the words uh, as they're drafted and as the council passed them. Mr. Stomach, did you want to opine? Uh, I mean, yeah, I think you just can't read it as a nullity. I don't really, um, you know, you have to kind of, I'm not an expert on statutory interpretation, but I think you have to try to do your best to give life to what the council was trying to do here. Um, and I just parenthetically want to thank the petitioner's council for actually explaining why the laws were enacted at the time they were because I think it's the first time anyone's ever tried to go back and say here's why these laws came into existence when they did um so certainly appreciate that um but yeah I mean I I don't know how to to yeah I mean I, I just think the council did these things for a reason it's clear they could have chosen not to I don't know why I didn't make it into the zoning code. Um, I mean, maybe somebody else understands that better than I do, but that, that would be my feeling is that it seems like, you know, you could put in a one acre lot. Um, and, you know, I think the original comments were that if they wanted to, they could put in a one and a half acre lot on that same land, which seems true. Um, but they, they don't want to. Um, but anyway, yeah, go ahead, um, Ms. Bernardi, sorry. Sure, and, and I, I can see arguments um, both ways. One, in that, yes, it's a footnote, and the footnote didn't make it um, into the, the actual um, regulation, and therefore there was some intent there um, by only footnoting it. 
but I also agree with both of you that by taking the time to actually footnote it is also giving it consideration. And recently, um, and I would need to get the citation, um, but there was a recent case that went to the Supreme Court, not in zoning, but um, a tax related case around you know deference and deference to agencies and agencies interpretation of statutes and and um and and whether or not those agencies should have that that deference um, but that only comes in the case if the statute is ambiguous in some way and um i think there's an argument that is not ambiguous this reg because it's noted in the statute so i could um agree with both of you and um, reach that determination um, that the Back River Neck um, District was defined specifically and therefore this property, property is in that district and therefore um, they should be able to subdivide this to one acre and not have to have the 1.5 acre minimum. But um, and I, I just want to note that there was no opposing argument that to to this that that uh, you know it's possible that someone might have made an argument in in contrary to that, but that was not before us. Agree. I I do think that um, although we could end it there, that with making a determination because someone could have argued differently that we should also. Um, consider the the second issue, just so that nothing could potentially be remanded to us for not considering that. Any objection to having discussion around about the variance and whether <clears throat> whether the variance should be granted from the one point five acre requirement to the one acre requirement? Yes, sir. Assuming that someone felt that we made an incorrect determination on issue one. Okay. Well, it, it appears to me that uh, with the odd shape, uh, somewhat odd shape of the thing, the environmental impact and other things that were laid out by the uh, <clears throat> by the uh, expert witness that was testifying. Uh, from glancing through my notes again, uh, it seems to me that uh, uh, contrary to what I think the administrative law judge uh, viewed, that uh, I would uh, I would uh, grant uh, variance uh, in the in this matter. I I agree with you, Mr. Lauer. Um... I, I think that the uniqueness, as you mentioned, around the shape, um, the fact that it is an environmentally protected area, the Chesapeake Bay critical area, um, adds to that uniqueness. I think that it also addresses the um, you know hardship component, and that it was not created by the the owners of the property because the environmental protection area that it's in doesn't allow it to be subdivided in any other way other than what has been um, determined here. They can't reach the 1.5 acre if we still want to make certain that we take into consideration the environmental um, issues that were raised by the expert. So I, I too would reach that conclusion that um, um, if we had to go by the special variance um, request that it would meet those conditions. How about you, Mr. Stone? Um, I agree with you with respect to the criteria for the special variance. Um, I think I'm a little hesitant in uh, granting it because I think that we have really granted with the special or with the uh, with the initial thing that we we d deliberated, you know, is really granting them what they want. But uh, I understand your desire to be thorough. 
So, um, yeah, I mean, to the extent that uh, my colleagues would would grant this, but the uh, the variance, I, I mean, I would agree that it, it meets the definition for the variance. And and I guess just you know to, to be clear and and making um, or, or writing the the decision, I, I think that we would lay them out um, as alternatives so that. We are very clear that we are granting it on the um, initial issue and that it is um, meets the definition under the the regs and that we had the authority to interpret um, the council bill, which allows that petition. And then we would say alternatively, this is what we also believe if there was some um, determination otherwise on the first issue, but. We are in agreement, gentlemen, and um, yep. believe that we addressed all the issues that we that were that were raised, and we'll make certain that we do so when um, the determination is issued. Thank you, okay. Madam Chair. Okay. Thank, Thank you very you. much, Madam Chair. Have a, Have a good day. All right, you too. Thank you. Thank you. Good seeing you. See you both.